wonderful game. This is a game where we have four wonderful, intellectual, brilliant wits. This is a lot of dogs we have to get. <laughs> they couldn't make it. But they couldn't make it. So, so. But anybody that does understand, the, the game of just a minute is can you talk for a minute on a subject of my specification? Can you talk without hesitation, deviation, repetition, or embarrassing me or Barry too much? Um, no. All yourself! All yourself. No, yeah, please, please. So, so I think we'll start, I think we'll start with Roy. No, okay. no man. Okay. Do you want to check your diggers ding? Okay, we will start with Lilo. Could you talk for one minute on the subject of the unexplained? <laughs> no. Life consists of questions answering the unexplained. But what do we mean by the unexplained? Is it simply something that we do not know the answer to? Or has it got to be larger, more mystified, more enigmatic than that? So we could say that if you are faced with a piece of uh, quadratic... I confess you're right. It was a hesitation. You, you get in with the subject of the unexplained, and you have 31 seconds, and your time starts now. Uh, the most remarkable thing about the unexplained is that, of course, it is unexplained. Now, by saying that, I don't mean that. Uh, anti hesitation. He's talking far too fast. <laughs> <laughs> anti unexplained. I can repeat the word unexplained. It's in the title. You can repeat the word in the title. Uh, I don't think you can be done for talking too fast, but I do, I do like it, so I will give you a point for that. But you were incorrectly challenged, so you get a point and something says to you, and you have 26 seconds, and your time starts now. The I think Andy got in first. Yes, Andy got in first. Andy, Andy, I think that was necessary. Okay. Okay, Andy, you have 23 seconds on the subject of the unexplained, and your time starts now. <laughs> the wonderful thing about the unexplained, from a psychoanalytic Freudian point of view, is that you can project anything you wish to on the unexplained. You could see it as something psychosexual or something to do with your own history. <laughs> Psychosexual is definitely deviation. Oh, okay. I think you got in there. Okay, Adrian, you need to be confronted and you clearly have eight seconds left on the pop on the subject of the unexplained, and your time starts now. One of the interesting things about the unexplained is the unexplained flying objects, which can often be seen hovering by the Amazing round, you'll be amazed to know we have three people tying for first place and one person not. <laughs> Jasper, yes. we'd like you to start with the next one now. And we'd like you You did, I've already marked it down. Uh, yes. Yes, you've got two points. Just check it. Sorry, are you being Samantha and... Oh. <laughs> if so, that's deviation. Yeah. You've got Samantha down here. Sharon, Don't go down there, you're not making it. Well, if you're doing just you're doing both. Do you want to be Samantha, or do you want to be Nicholas Parsons? <laughs> come on, come on, you can be Nicholas Parsons then. <coughs> so, for different deviation. Do you want to be timekeeper? We need a Samantha. We get a complaint from the echo here. No, it's just coming out of there. You got the cheap laugh. I got that. But not the actual laugh. Yes. 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 Okay. And Jasper, you start the next round. And you have one minute on the subject of great literature. And your time starts. Now, the point about great literature is, of course, that it's great. Now, that's not to say that everybody thinks it's great, because some people think that great literature is actually very boring literature. For instance, Larry Heights, it goes within the great literature attack, but it's, 
hesitation. There was a hesitation there, I think, Andy. Oh, you, you guys are right, Andy, and you have, yeah. you have 49 <laughs> seconds on the clock on the subject of bread literature, and your time starts now. I would like to believe that everybody on these two tables writes, in some sense, great literature. Lionel Fanfolk, for instance, has written reams and reams of great literature. Great literature that comes out of here. Reams twice. Correct. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, a uh, Adrian, you, you, you have the subject of great literature, and you have four, uh, 38 seconds on the clock, and your time starts now. I'm very fond of great literature and have read a certain amount of it. I have read Charles Dickens and various writers of that time. I right went down through the factory. Uh, <laughs> uh, hesitation. I think that was hesitation. Okay. We have, 20, we have 26 seconds on the clock, and great literature, and the time starts now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 so your challenge is shooting fish in a barrel. Hesitation. 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 24 seconds on the clock on the subject of great literature. And your time starts now. Great literature is something which we all enjoy reading, and there are very many examples of it, such as Charles Dickens. Oh, I mentioned Charles Dickens. Oh, this is. Uh, but it's within the same minute, so it does count. Correct challenge. You need to listen to more radio. This is it's within the most great of just a minute. You have 14, 16 seconds on the clock on the subject of great literature. Great literature, and your time starts now. When I bought a new flyer, I got the literature critic, which of course is great <laughs> literature. This is the literature that tells you exactly that's what it is. The flyer. That is the literature. You are right. I'm going to let Lino have the point because I'm going to hit Lino. Okay. Lino, you steal it with seven seconds to go on the clock. On the subject of great literature, and your time starts now. Great literature has been one of the most important things. Oh, there I go. I brought my glass. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's an incorrect, incorrect challenge. <laughs> <laughs> that's a point to Lino. You're up, Lino. You have three seconds on the clock on the subject of great literature, and your Let's time starts again. Great literature is something which we all enjoy here at our Mardi Gras. Time. Yeah. <laughs> And your time starts now. There are many different varieties of grass seed that can be bought in your local... <laughs> <laughs> That's what you have. 44 seconds on the clock on the subject of grass. And your time starts now. The one thing I dislike about grass is the fact that you have to cut it. It's constantly growing. There's nothing you can do about it. It keeps on growing. <laughs> Hesitation. Okay, you have 37 seconds on the clock on the subject of grass. I'm starting now. Red fescue is probably my favourite variety of grass. It grows reasonably long and it's a very hardy variety. But it makes you so happy. Repetition, variety, red. You have 28 seconds on the clock on the subject of grass, and your time starts now. <laughs> 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 
It's so it's bar it's like barrel again, isn't it? <laughs> It's, it's known that everybody's hand is about a centimetre apart. <laughs> <laughs> Adrian, you kindly gain grass back. You have 27 seconds on the clock to recitate about grass. Grass is an interesting colour because it is green, and green, as you know, is also the colour of the <laughs> Red is <of> green. Correct. Jasper was slightly ahead of me. No, 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 I think you've got it. I think you've got it. Okay. You have 22 seconds on the clock on the subject of grass, and your time starts now. Grass fills the planet. In fact, there have been very interesting science fiction stories about the death of grass, which would bring the rest of us down with it, were it ever to occur. Grass is... I don't think it's hesitation. I think it's about to be the grass twice. I'd like to say it. It's okay, because grass was the topic. If I said it twice when it wasn't, you're dead right. No, I, don't, I don't think there was a hesitation. Oh, no, that was called breathing. <laughs> yeah, and you have eight seconds on the clock on the topic of grass and the show with zombie cows. Grass can be very unpleasant for those of us who suffer from hay fever, although it's the grass rather than like that, which causes the repetition of hay. No, no, try to find me in position. Yeah, I'm sure hay fever and hay is Now we move now on to Andy. We'd like you to start and we'd like you to speak for one minute on the subject of doctors. And your time starts now. Doctors is a series which is produced by the BBC and transmitted most afternoons during the course of the working week. I once applied to get a job writing scripts for the programme of Doctors and found that they, their standards were much higher than I was anticipating. And I found it very difficult to get a job writing for the programme. He said job twice. Who's side are you on? I'm on your side. Uh, repetition of B, B, C. Oh, B, B. Repetition of B. B, B, C. I think he's cheating. It's been done on the program, I guarantee you. Okay, Jasper, you steal it on a devious one there. Hang on, what am I talking about? You are talking about doctors, and you have 30 seconds on the clock, and your time starts now. Uh, the thing that we would think of about doctors, of course, in this sort of room and coming to a science fiction conference is, of course, the many doctors who are the doctors who, of course. The first doctor, doctor is Bob Coulson. I think so. Yes, I think so. Adrian, you start the subject. You have 20 seconds on the clock on the subject of doctors and your time starts now. Doctors, doctors, Medical practitioners uh, are very famous and well liked by people who come to conventions such as this convention. You have seen many examples. A repetition of conventions. You come to conventions like this convention. Correct. Yes, you have a convention. Yes. No, I think you're right, Shazka. You keep you still at that. And you have seven seconds on the clock on the subject of. Doctors, and your time starts now. I went to my doctor, and he said I only had six months to live. Deviations, uh, <coughs> doctors, not doctor singular. Oh, no, I saw two doctors. You didn't see <laughs> <laughs> Did I? <laughs> <laughs> Admittedly, you hadn't established you were talking about doctors. And I wasn't, I wasn't actually going to tell the truth, Jerry. I, I give up. Uh, but I, I you give up your point. I can see. I'd like to hear the joke. <laughs> <laughs> we we'll give you a point. Because I think he's bluffing. <laughs> we we'll give you a point. Oh, you think he's bluffing. <laughs> and we we'll keep you keep the subject. <laughs> and you suddenly have four seconds to tell the joke. And your time starts now. I went to see my doctor, and they told me I had six months to live, but I couldn't pay him. And so he got another six months. <laughs> <laughs> And you were currently speaking as the time winner and got a point for that dollar. Yes, it was a sweet town. Probably a sunshine joke. Lino, we move back to you. We would like you to talk for one minute on the subject of pulp fiction. 
And your time starts now. Top fiction is a term that is used to describe writing which is about to be, at the end of its readable life, turned into the pulp of the key word. There was a time before the planet was in serious danger of being um, globally heated. To the right books and they were there in soul at the end. Have we got the energy at the end? There are them. No, was there hesitation? Yeah, okay. Yeah, Andy, you, you take the point. Please, Joey. Take the point. And you have 42 seconds on the clock. We need a lot of pop fiction and your time starts now. In a sense, all fiction is pop fiction because all books, paperbacks, and other means of recording information on paper will be pop at the end of the day and will be reduced to their constituent parts. Except, of course, nowadays for electronic media, which will last forever in some form of storage or another. <laughs> I think there was a hesitation. You're pulling ahead. You have 19 seconds on the clock on the subject of pulp fiction, and your time starts now. These are two words which always strike the greatest fear into the war when they hear it from their publisher. Because what it means is that they're just not selling. The other really awful word to hear is remain, which is not something that you complain about. There was a hesitation, Adrian, I think you're right there. Adrian, you have five seconds on the clock on the subject of pulp fiction, and your time starts now. Pulp fiction was a famous film starring John Travolta and one or two other various people who were also very famous. Famous? Repetition of things. You ran past a while ago, though. Oh, you've got me quickly just to it. I've been doing so good. Okay, it was completing that one. Okay, and we move on to uh, Jasper. We'd like you to talk for a minute on the subject of B movies. And your time starts now. B movies are movies that bees go to have a look. They're very bored when they're making honey all day long, and at the end of a very long day, they like nothing better than to. Yes. Long twice as well. I like it. Yeah, yeah, but you got it. I think Adrian got in first there. So Adrian, you talk about B movies, and you have 50 seconds on the clock, and your time starts now. One of my favourite B movies was the last one. I can't remember the title. <laughs> that was a preemptive hesitation there. Right? A preemptive <laughs> hesitation. That's <laughs> no, 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 okay. I, I think Andy's got his one in there. We've given you the second place, Andy. Yeah. And you have 46 seconds on the clock, and your time starts now. One of my favourite B-movies of all time is Killer Clowns from Outer Space, in which a group of aliens from some far distant planet arrive on Earth in a flying saucer disguised cunningly as a circus big top. Now these creatures are coming disguised. <laughs> <laughs> it was about to be got in there. You have 27 seconds on the subject of B-movies and your time starts now. Well, my favourite B-movie is Fan 9 from Outer Space, which is probably the most B-movie of all the B-movies. It's not only awful, it is really awful. <laughs> 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 Yeah, Lino, you come in. 18, 18 seconds on the subject of B-movies, and your time starts now. <laughs> B-movies are far better than they are realised by the... Ma <laughs> 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 Too many horrible hesitations all over the world. I think that was a repetition of... Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> Only once. Right. OK, Adrian, you, you steal it with... 11 seconds to go on the subject of B-movies and your time it starts now. The movie that I was trying to recall earlier on when I was talking about B-movies was... I, I think that's a good Because you're not talking about B-movies, you're talking about something that you did like 10 minutes ago. Audience, what do you think? Is, is, is he deviating from the subject? No. 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 Okay, that's an incorrect challenge. So, Adrian, another point. Moving him into second place. And you still have the subject of the movies. And you have four seconds to go on the clock. And your time starts now. 
B movie that I was trying to recall was Earth versus the Flying Saucers. That's, That's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well Adrian speaks speaking as the as the clock ran down. Adrian, the oh, speaker as the clock built, has moved into equal first place. Ooh. And we're coming to the final stretch of, of the game. So Adrian, we'd like you to talk for a minute on the subject of weird science. <laughs> and your time starts now. Weird science has been around for a very long time. As far as I can recall, the first instance of this would have been Frankenstein, followed by Dracula, followed by Wolfman. Evolution. Yeah. Repetition of follow. Weird science. Weird science. So, do we go? Do we go? Dracula challenges deviation, or do we go with the repetition? Well, I'd repetition. Jasper thinks we should always go for deviation. Deviation. So we've heard. All right. So we're going for deviation. Andy, you take. You take it. And you have 49 seconds on the subject of weird science, and your time starts now. Weird Science was one of those bizarre 1980s teenage movies that turned up on a regular basis on the sci-fi channel. This particular movie, as I recall, had a couple of teenagers building... Teenagers. Oh. You edge into the lead with that one. You have 35 seconds on the subject of Weird Great Science, point. and your time starts now. The teenagers that uh, he was talking about to her. You did say to her. Well, to her is human. Adrian, you get a point. You're now tying for the lead. You have control. You have 32 seconds on the subject of weird science, and your time starts now. Weird science must be one of the most fascinating subjects to attend to. Hesitation? Yes. Lion, you have. 24 seconds on the clock on the subject of weird science and your time starts now. Weird science may be thought to be something of a contradiction in terms because the scientific method requires a logical Oh, yeah. <laughs> Adrian, you can Whoever wants it, comes in on hesitation and he sneaks into the lead. You have 13 seconds on the clock on the subject of weird science and your time starts now. Weird science is often used to describe the antics of the mad science of the proceeding in the various fields. Hesitation, my friend. Hesitation, Andy, did you get that one? Okay, Andy, you have five seconds on the clock on the subject of weird science, and your time starts now. Building a beautiful woman in a skimpy t-shirt and a pair of briefs. I'll stop right there. there. <laughs> <laughs> We're stopping you before yeah, you do like the deviation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They said it's finished yet. We never actually got round to it. Okay, speaking as the clock goes down, uh, uh, Andy gains another point. We move into the final <laughs> round. And the scores as they stand at the moment in fourth place, but trading for a good score with eight points is Lino. Next we have oh, we have a tie of Andy and Jasper on twelve, but with a one point lead on thirteen, it's Adrian. Andy, you start the final round, and we would like you to talk for one minute without hesitation, deviation, or whatever the thing was, on the subject of a Amarnacol. And your time starts now. My first Amarnacol was many years ago. I remember turning up at the Cockthorn Hotel on the outskirts of Plymouth, where the food was rather interesting and the drink was incredibly expensive. But the convention was good fun and I met a lot of very interesting and nice people at the time. We then moved on in the Cockthorn into the no Wow! Second cop thought? Only one. 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 Only one.
As attendees at this arm at the moment, though I've not been present for some 16 years, although I did come to arm at one, two, three, and four, and had a wonderful time, and met many interesting people, did many interesting things. Did you have a position of did? Interesting. I think this is the do a pitch ask for you to take control. Um, 25 seconds on the subject of a model and your time starts now. Can I say that? I've to many Can I say that? I can't say that at all. No, no, no. I think that's correct. Adrian. You get a point, you have 19 seconds, you will It's a good point. 19 seconds on a monocon and your time starts now. One of the great fun things about our monocon is that people like me get the opportunity to play all sorts of very strange and weird games, an example of which you can hear now at this very moment we're talking about this particular one. <laughs> Andy? You have, Andy, you have five seconds on the clock with one point separating you and the leader. And you have, so no pressure. So no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> you thank you to talk for a monocon with five seconds on the clock and your time starts now. I was at a convention in Los Angeles some months ago with Rob Shearman and I asked him, did he That's enjoy it. his... That's uh, it. Uh, uh, yeah, and he said... No, 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 that was it. Sorry. That's the end of the class. If you don't bring in, it doesn't matter. Okay, folks, we've moved to the game. In a very nice fourth place on the big points was Lido. Coming in, where a very respectable 13 was Jasper. On 14 points was Andy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> our resounding sport of the night was well, Adrian on 15 points. 